I'm Darla Z. My passion for music has allowed me to star in three public television specials. I'm a singer and a songwriter, and I've worked with legends such as Wayne Newton, Willie Nelson, and the Gap Band. I've performed all over America, including many appearances in Las Vegas. Another passion of mine is healthy cooking, and in this series, I'll share some of my favorite keto-friendly recipes. I really hope you enjoy them. Darla Z here, and I'm celebrating, uh, what can I be celebrating? New Year's? No. Good guess. St. Patrick's Day. We're making corned beef and cabbage. Because you know why? We're tired of listening to the gloom and doom on the news. And even though we're at home right now, we're going to make a delicious meal. And it's a recipe that I have had for a while. I have adapted it to make it keto friendly, just as delicious. And I'm going to show you how to do it. I am joined today by my delightful Irish mother. Her name is Linda. She is a terrific cook and she is who I learned how to cook from. Corned beef and cabbage have been a staple in Ireland for years. Also, you know what is an Irish recipe is Irish coffee. And if you hang till the end of this video, I will show you how to make the best Irish coffee in the world. Yummy, so good. But I can't have it here at my mom's house because it has alcohol. <laughs> but she can't have any because she goes crazy. It's like a little leprechaun. Runs around. No, she doesn't go crazy. The corned beef usually comes in packaging like this. It does have its own spice packet with it. We're going to have parsley, two onions, a bay leaf, a head of garlic, cabbage. That is a keto-friendly sweetener that we'll put on at the end. Chicken broth, salt and pepper. My favorite, or one of my favorite ingredients, za'atar, and some French's mustard. When you get the package of corned beef, you just go ahead and dump the entire contents in there because that all is seasoning as well. Then you get the little packet that comes with it and go ahead and dump it in. Then I add 32 ounces of chicken broth to the pot and I'll show you what that looks like next once I get it all together. Here are the two onions quartered, the chicken broth, parsley, I've added za'atar, about two tablespoons, and I've got the garlic head chopped off so it just provides seasoning and it's ready to go in the oven. I'm going to cover it tightly with aluminum foil and it's gonna cook at least three and a half hours. I have taken it out of the oven and now I'm going to trim off some of the fat that you see. So now I smear the mustard all over it. Make sure you save enough mustard because you're gonna to wanna to serve it on the side. And I'm gonna smear it around to make it coated. This is the sweetener right here, and it's got a golden brown color. We're just gonna drizzle it on top of the mustard. And if you use brown sugar, you just coat it over that. I'm gonna add some of these onions. That way they can, you can eat them on the side. You wanna salt and pepper it, and you wanna put some of this juice in here with it too after it boils, so just a little. I'm now going to put this pan in the oven and let it broil for about 10 minutes or until it looks nicely golden on top. I want to thank my mother, here she is, for letting me have her house today. It was a real pleasure having the keto happy chef <laughs> in here. Singing <laughs> keto friendly oh. chef, but that's okay. <laughs> that she's always singing, but I figured I'd add happy. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. Yeah. For the cabbage, I chunk little pieces like this, and then I put it into boiling water with salt and a little bit of butter and one peeled garlic clove in there. The cabbage is boiling, and I've taken the corned beef out of the oven. I'm gonna spoon some of this remaining juice over it. Still waiting for the cabbage to get tender. To take the center part out of your cabbage head, 
cut one down the middle, clear through, then cut it in half of each of that, that one in half. So you have your cabbage head cut in four pieces. Then you just stand it on end, on the little flat end, and you cut the little inner core out with one long swoop. And then that's all there is to it. If you want to go a touch non-keto, you can also put brown sugar on it and do a little glaze and bake it in the oven. And then it gets a, a nice golden brown. And it's still really good. I think you'd look really cute if you wore the green hat. You won't wear it? No, I won't wear the green hat. Are you ready to sing our little ditty? All right. <laughs> look so excited. <laughs> are you Irish or are you? I am, you're not. <laughs> I am too, I got your blood, don't you I? Got, you got, no, you're, you're <laughs> daddy's kid. <laughs> oh, we could put him up here. You think he'd sing? He's a French poodle. You better not squirm. Okay, you ready? Don't kiss me. Two. To Aluva, to we're both a little Irish, and we love St. Patrick's Day. If you can say you're Irish, you're as lucky as can be. So sing this little ditty with dear old mom and me. If you chance upon a leprechaun and a pot of gold you see, be sure to claim your wishes. He'll only grant you three. Oh, to a lua lua, to a lua Happy St. Patrick's Day. Luckily, my mom lives right across the street. So I packed everything up. I'm gonna serve dinner for us. She doesn't eat dinner, but I'm gonna sneak in my Irish coffee. What I've got here is some whipping cream that I've whipped up and I'll show you the consistency that it should be. I've got my two little coffee cups from San Francisco. That's who first served the Irish coffee in the United States, but of course it came from Ireland. Then we have Tula Moore. Tula, Tula, Tula. Tula Moore do whiskey, Irish whiskey. We make freshly brewed coffee. For each one, you put in one and a half, and I do a little jigger here. This is my measuring for my whiskey. But first, you pour the coffee in. I have used a package of stevia in the raw. You can use raw sugar, that's not keto, but that's how my husband drinks it. Then you stir it up until the granules dissolve at the bottom. And you put in about that much coffee. Then you put in the whiskey. Yum. You don't want to make the whipped cream too thick. You almost want to make it to where it'll pour because you want it kind of like that. You don't want it as stiff as you would for like a dessert, but you want it to just sit on top of the coffee. And the perfect Irish whiskey, let's hope I do it right, is where the whipped cream will just sit on top. Looks pretty good. That is a perfect Irish whiskey. Here we are ready to eat our corned beef and cabbage Irish dinner. And doesn't that look delicious? Happy St. Patrick's Day. Thanks mom for your help. Cheers. <laughs> May the luck of the Irish find you. And happy St. Patrick's Day.